so if we zoom really in and we look at just one villi, okay? So here's our epithelium, all right? Um, this is one of the little uh, uh, tufts of the carpet that lines the intestine. If you look, we can see that the arteries and veins here have a parallel arrangement, very similar to what we saw in the vasa recta, right, in the, in the um, gut, or in the kidney. So arterial supply comes in here, venous supply goes out here. Now, because of this arrangement, we have oxygenated blood sitting right next to deoxygenated so one of the things that can happen, this is a weak spot. If you were going to redesign a human being, you wouldn't have this be parallel, okay? This system works great in the arms where um, <clears throat> we use it for heat exchange. But in the gut, what happens, some of the oxygen from here diffuses over to here and then is washed back out before it ever gets to the tip, right? So there's a kind of bypass of the actual capillary bed. Now, normally this isn't an issue, all right, because there's plenty of blood flow to the gut. We were just talking about that. Massive collaterals, great vasodilators. Normally this isn't an issue. But if you have a situation where your oxygen delivery is compromised, so let's say you've had an MI and you have an arrhythmia and you are on the floor and a code blue is being called, right? Okay, so at that point, you're not delivering very much oxygen to the cells of your body. But because of this arrangement, it makes the intestinal villi a very common site of ischemia and death when there is period of hypoxia. So whether you had a drowning, whether you had an MI, whether you had a heroin overdose and stopped breathing, Whatever the cause of your reduction in oxygen, one of the places that's going to be damaged is your intestinal villi. To such an extent that it is incredibly common in ICUs to have patients with significant GI disturbance as they're recovering from whatever put them in the ICU. Because the villi die off, right? Now, to make matters worse, when we put people in the ICU, we typically stop feeding them, right? The villi get the nutrients they need to live from the GI tract, not from the blood. So you're not only, get, you have an ischemic attack on this area, but then they also starve to death and die for that way. So one of the themes you'll see in um, hospital and ICU medicine is that we try to feed patients as soon as we think they can tolerate it, right? That isn't really about systemic nutrition. It's more about feeding the villi so they don't die, so that the patient has a faster recovery, right? So some key things about the villi. So you have this countercurrent blood flow, weird bit. So anything that affects oxygenation for a period of time, you're likely to have dead villi in the end. And, and why does that matter? <clears throat> less villi is less surface area, right? Less surface area means less digestion and less absorption. So if you feed the patient like normal, but they have less surface area to do those things, they're gonna start having what we call osmotic diarrhea, where some of the materials that they could have absorbed didn't get absorbed because of a lack of surface area and then it comes out the other end, causes problems.